After you've created a classification, it's often necessary just to tidy it up a little bit. And now I've got my trend analysis pretty much complete. What I'd like to do is to remove areas within the shape file that are essential that are polygons that are essentially made up of less than two pixels. It's unlikely that they that these have been correctly classified as burnt areas. So what I first need to do is to be able to know what the size of each individual polygon is in terms of its area. So there's two ways that I can go about doing this. If I go to Horse Tools and Table Tools, there's an option here to add the area or perimeter fields to a table. So this will simply give me the additional columns in my attribute table for, for my um, shapefile. The other way that you can go about doing it is to use Arc Toolbox and under Spatial Statistics Tools, Utilities, you can then select the Calculate Areas script. And so what this does is you just input the shapefile, which for us would be the burnt area shapefile, sorry, the burnt union shapefile, and then output a new shapefile. So the difference between the two tools is that the Arc script will output a whole new shapefile, whereas the Horse tools will just add the additional columns to the original shapefile. However, the Arc Toolbox script is considerably faster. So if you've got a little bit of time, probably go through the Horse Tools one. Otherwise, if you want it to be done quickly, the Arc Toolbox script is much better as it's faster. So anyway, I've gone through the Arc Toolbox. I've entered my Burnt Union file in there and I've created an output file. And if you now go to the table of contents, you'll see that a new shapefile has been added called this Burnt Union Areas. Now I guess the only, the only other problem with it is that I've lost all the symbology that I had previously created for my Burnt Union file. So what I'd like to do is to really quickly get back to the symbology that I had previously. So if I right click and go down to properties, rather than manually entering all those colours and names in again, I can simply go to import and select the Burnt Union shape file there. And I'm just agreeing here that the burnt code is the, is the column that I'm still going to use for the symbology. So I click OK. And you'll see that I now have all the symbology that's exactly the same as what I had previously generated. So if I click OK and apply that, I now have the decent map. Now what, what happened when I created the, the area column here for my for my shapefile. They said the shapefile looks exactly the same in terms of the attribute table, but now there's an additional column that's been added along here that lets me know the area of each individual polygon. So as you scroll through this, you'll be able to see the how, how small and how large individual polygons are. And what we want to do here is to remove any polygons that are essentially equal to or smaller than two pixels, as I believe that they're probably misclassified. So to do this, what we first of all need to do is to activate the editor toolbar. And if that if that isn't already up, all you need to do is to right click in the toolbar area and select editor. Now that I have that activated, I can click on that and go to start editing. And I'd like to edit my burnt union areas file, so I click OK. All I'd like to do to start with then is to identify those polygons that have a small area. So if I now go into the table properties here and go select by attributes. I can double click on this area column here which sends it down to the bottom. So I'm going to select areas, select polygons where the area is less than or equal to 1800. So 1800 is the the area in terms of meters squared of two, two pixels. So a pixel being the 30 by 30 meters there. And so so we then get the, um, the area and we click apply. Alright, so now in our attribute table we will see that there's a number of records selected, 17,000 in fact, and if we move down to our map you'll also see that they're all selected there as well. Okay, and these are, these are all ones that we want to delete. And also, if you go in the attribute table, you can you can have the option to so, to show only those records that are selected. So if I click on that button there to show only selected records, and if you want to just double check that you have correctly applied that equation, you should be able to see the only records that are selected have an area of either 900 or 1800. So as you scroll down, you'll see that that's correct in my particular attribute table. 
So as I want to get rid of those, all I'm going to do is simply hit the button delete and that will remove all of my all of my selected records both from the attribute table and from the and from the display that we see there. So, so it takes a little while as it needs to delete 17,000 records. You'll soon see that as that's completed, we won't see the, the cyan selection anymore. And so once we've done that, all we need to do is to save our, our edits and we, we'll have a new shapefile that is now essentially the trend analysis. And the benefit of doing this sort of trend analysis is that we've now included three dates in our multi-temporal analysis, whereas the other options that we've looked at before in, in terms of post-classification change detection have only looked at two individual dates at a time. So with this trend analysis we can include as many different dates as we like. You could include the, the pixel value for for every single month of the year, for example. And you don't need to use a classified image either. You could use, for example, an NDVI value in a particular date and track how that's changing over time.